chowders, cherry stones, little necks. Seafood lovers find these tasty, nutritional hard clams irresistible. For most of the 20th century, the hard clam, or northern quahog, known to scientists as Mercenaria mercenaria, has been one of the most valuable seafood products harvested in New York's bays. But in 2002, a severe threat to the New York hard clam industry surfaced when shellfish transplant harvesters began reporting large numbers of dead and dying clams in the waters off the coast of Staten Island. The diagnosis? A single-celled microscopic parasite that only infects northern hard clams. Scientists named it QPX for Quahog Parasite Unknown. Since that outbreak, scientists at the Marine Animal Disease Laboratory at Stony Brook University have learned more about this disease and its transmission. At the lab, Dr. Bassam Alam and his team have carried out several New York Sea Grant funded projects to address QPX. For a current QPX project, Dr. Alam begins the task of bleeding the fluid hemolymph from experimental clams. Here, Sea Grant scholar and PhD student Chin Chin Liu looks on. As a Sea Grant scholar, Chin Chin worked to isolate and maintain the QPX parasite in living culture. A living culture is crucial for most investigations of the disease. Dr. Alam and Chin Chin examine the quality of growth of the laboratory culture. Dr. Alam is removing the fluid from one of the 180 clams that he will bleed over the next two days. This particular clam must have been from a warm temperature tank. As Dr. Alam says, the warmer the temperature, the faster the clam's heart will pump and the more hemolymph will be produced. Here's the lesson plan for today. This flowchart lays out what the fate will be of the experimental clams that are going to be processed in the lab. PhD student Miguel Perigo uses a pipette to transfer some of the fluid into a variety of vials that will undergo different chemical assays. Miquel's research is on the genetics of the different strains of Mercenaria mercenaria and their degree of immunity to the effects of the QPX bacteria. Plenty of great technical support is given by lab technician Sue Powagi. Here she dissects an experimental clam. She takes special care to show the dark spot, which is the top of the clam's excurrent siphon. Clams are filter feeders with an incurrent siphon bringing in water and nutrients and an excurrent siphon bringing water and waste out. The siphon is a likely place for the QPX bacteria to be found and create lesions in the tissue. The other part of the clam meat, the mantle, will also be examined. Sue hands off the samples of clam tissue while Sea Grant scholar Soren Dahl places them into separate vials. The tissue will go off to the histology lab where the pieces will be thinly sliced and stained to reveal the presence of clusters of QPX cells. In order to prevent accidental contamination of a tissue sample with the QPX of another, Sorn carefully sterilizes his forceps with each use. Later at the histology lab, the staining will reveal any potential QPX, like the clusters of cells seen in this stained slide. So what are the next steps in QPX research? Several complementary research projects have already begun, examining variables like temperature, 
density, and possible vectors that may help disease transmission. Continuing with Sea Grant funding at the Marine Animal Disease Lab, located at the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences at Stony Brook University, and working closely with other agencies like the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, Dr. Bassam Alam and his team will continue to take the X out of QPX disease.